This video is sponsored by DF Robot. Hey everyone, Max here, back again with another video tutorial. This time we're going to make an efficient solar power bank with folding solar panels. This power bank is mainly made up of modules sent to me by dfrobot.com. So thanks a lot to them for making this video possible. This power bank is also kitted out with a handful of other cool little features, which we'll get to a bit later in this video. With its custom made folding solar panel, it's so compact, you can take this anywhere with you and just lay it out. And it all just folds back up into the box and boom, right into your pocket. So without wasting any more time, let me show you how it's made. Opening up the package DF Robot had sent me containing a handful of parts that we'll need in order to make this power bank. Here's all the parts out of the package and laid out. We have a dual lithium ion battery holder, battery capacity indicator module, beetle microcontroller, green LED push button, 5 volt solar power management module, and finally a 6 watt monocrystalline solar panel. Although you will see this solar panel in use a bit later in this video with the power bank, we're not actually going to integrate it to the power bank. Instead, we're going to make our own solar panel based off these small polycrystalline panels just to have something a little less bulky and more portable. So here's everything you'll need in order to make the solar power bank, including additional components and parts. Considering I had an odd number of solar panels, I had to make this kind of solar panel array for the folding solar panel. Note that it's safer to solder the inner solar panel leads in case you accidentally rip the outer ones. If you accidentally do so, then one of your panels may not work anymore. So the first step is to wire all of these solar panels in parallel. In doing so, you'd basically be adding to the overall output current. Once you've soldered them all in parallel, be sure to add a couple of output wires for the connector. Next step is to add on all of the necessary flaps needed to hold these panels together, all from strips of duct tape, as we need some kind of thing that also allows us to fold all of them together in a really compact space. This is actually a method I came up with myself, as using something like fabric I thought would be too much of a hassle. So when doing this, be sure you have at least a 6mm gap between each pair of solar panels, so there's enough space for them to fold in either direction. Once the panels are all taped together, it should look something like this. Hmm, not too shabby. But we do need a way to cover all of the gaps in between along with the wires, so I chose electrical tape for the job. Be sure to cut the strips in appropriate widths and lengths so that you don't cover any of the panels up. Good thing for the electrical tape stretchiness properties, it doesn't restrict the folding movement of the panels. So what I did here spray painting the duct tape on the back of the solar panels was actually a pretty silly idea as the paint easily just peels off. So it's best you don't do what I did. With the foldable solar panel folded up, it measures 2.5 centimeters in thickness. Next, we're going to solder on a male JST connector onto the output terminals of the solar panel. And we'll actually do the same for the monocrystalline solar panel. So here's the DF Robot Solar Power Manager board. Before we do any circuitry with it, we gotta first desolder anything that sticks up and it's just a little too tall for the solar power bank because we also need to fit the solar panels on top of it. Though let's keep these three pin headers over here since it serves an important function of keeping the board on. Soldering a female JST connector to the solar input terminal on the board, we can now hook up a solar panel to it. Then we're gonna rewire this two cell lithium battery holder so that it is instead in a parallel configuration. Now when you clip two lithium ion batteries into the case, their positive terminals are now connected. Then you're going to want to hook up the two wires coming from this battery pack to the battery input terminal on the board through a switch. Next let's wire up this battery capacity animation display. So we kind of want the two modules, the battery indicator and the push button to sit like this. So here we have the DF Robot Beetle Board, a really small cut down version of the Arduino Leonardo board since it has the same exact chip. This will read the battery's voltage and display it on the battery indicator module and connected to it will also be a push button toggling the battery display on and off. To 
this pin on the microcontroller, I'm connecting a 10 kilo ohm resistor through which it'll read the voltage level on the battery. There we go, we got this part of the circuit wired up. Then we're going to make a little lamp consisting of these 8 millimeter LEDs which will sit on the side of the power bank. Before wiring them up, be sure to sand the edges and glue all three LEDs together. Now you're going to want to solder all three in a parallel configuration. Keep in mind that these are going to get really hot, so you're going to want to add a current limiting resistor. Since I didn't have any high power resistors lying around, I had to twist six of these 10 ohm resistors together. Now we're going to wire up these three circuits together that we've made so far. Connect the microcontroller's input terminals to where it says 5 volt and ground on the solar power manager and the microcontroller's voltage reading wire to the positive battery terminal. Then hook up the little lamp that we made so it runs off directly from the battery. But don't wire its switch just yet. Before mounting anything to the container, be sure to mark out and cut some appropriately sized holes and gaps for all the parts to poke through. This is just about how it should look. Now you can take all of the hardware and stick it into your box, securing the modules and parts that sit on the bottom of the container with double-sided tape. With a few drops of super glue, you can fixate the side lamp in place so it pokes out like so. Without any glue, just clip in the LED's switch and hook up the LED's positive wire to the positive battery terminal through the same switch. So far, so good. We've come a long way with the circuit. Using plastic lollipop stick tubes, you can cut them up into 5mm pieces, use them as bolting spacers to secure the battery indicator module to the front of the power bank. Drill a couple of holes to bolt the push button to the front of the power bank. As one of the last steps in making this power bank, you can even make a grippy bottom from 2mm foam sheet. I decided to paint mine black. And don't forget to fill in any unwanted cracks or gaps in the power bank with some transparent epoxy. Before we can use the battery capacity indicating feature, we got a first program for it. Now that we're looking at the parts from the outside, it can be confusing at times. This micro USB is for charging, and this one is for programming. So opening up my code in the Arduino IDE, first check that you have Arduino Leonardo selected as the board, and also select your COM port. Check that the defined pins match what's wired up to your microcontroller. Once you've uploaded the code, this is how it should work. You press the button once, and then the indicator stays on until you press it again to turn it off. Well, we've made it. The power bank is complete. Do know that when you're recharging the power bank from the sun or through a USB, it's important to keep the switch on. So hooking up my phone to the power bank, then turning the power bank's switch on, you can see as it starts to charge. So now let's try it out in the sun. So when your phone has fully charged, all you have to do 
is just unplug everything, open up the box, fold the panels in, tuck everything in nice and tight, close it up, and boom, you're ready to go again. So you've seen it in action with the folding solar panels. Now let's try the monocrystalline 6 watt solar panel on my backpack with the homemade power bank hooked up to it. So 10 minutes ago I plugged it in at 7% and now it's at 15 so it's charging pretty good. So here you can see as it jumps from 19% to 20% and a couple of minutes later it's at 21% just to give you an idea of the rate it charges at. So I have this app called Ampere which measures the current the phone receives when charging and as you can see you got a maximum of about 0.7 amps with the semi-flexible solar panel and it charged my phone at 570 milliamps with my homemade folding solar panel. And in comparison to charging from an outlet, the current doesn't really differ too much. And this is what the current value goes up to when you plug in a 3.4 amp charger. So after I did a bit of measuring of the solar panel's outputs in terms of voltage and current and what the power bank can supply, this is what conclusion I came to. Using the formula for finding electrical power, I calculated that the raw power output coming from my homemade solar panel is about 5 watts max, and that DF Robot's solar panel is truly 6 watts. Using the solar panel efficiency formula, I found out that my homemade panel is nearly 19% efficient, and DF Robot's solar panel is about 21% efficient, which is exactly what they mentioned on their website. Using what I call the charging time formula, with the homemade solar panel, it'll take up to 6 hours to charge the power bank in direct sunlight and about four and a half hours when using the monocrystalline solar panel. And then with the stored energy from the power bank's battery, it'll take around three hours to charge a phone. But that all depends on your phone's battery capacity. It could take less time or even more. And here's just to show you it can charge dozens of other types of five volt devices. Okay everyone, that's about all for this video showing you how to make this solar efficient power bank with folding solar panels. I'm pretty pleased at the rate it charges my phone at. I'm probably gonna use it every day when I'm out somewhere. Quite a fun project. Thanks to DF Robot again, and don't forget to check out their online store in the description below. Also check out the affiliated links to all of their parts to make this power bank. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.